In this video, I'm going to explain to you what it takes to properly, thoroughly prepare for a behavioral uh, interview. And uh, towards the end of it, I, I'm also going to add some tips and tricks uh, about uh, how do you ensure that your performance will be the best during the actual interview. So the first thing you want to take into, into account here is that is to assess how much time you have to invest into this process. Um, think about it. How many hours, how many days, what's the best quantifier here in your case? What you want to do then is to split that time into half. Percentages might vary, but usually it's half-half. Uh, the first one should be pre preparing the written answers to some behavior questions. So it is the brainstorming phase of the behavior interview preparation. And the second step is uh, the actual practice. So, needless to say, that the, my first uh, observation here is that many people underestimate the importance of the second step. So, they tend to do like more 90% for the theory and only 10% for the practice. So, keep this in mind. Uh, try to follow. This would be the number one. The, fir the, second, uh, the second point here, how do you prepare? How do you prepare the th theoretical part? And uh, the point here is that you should first... Uh, I mean, what's a behavioral question first? A behavioral question is... Um, um, a question that asks you from your uh, ask you for a situation for a story from your previous experience, so that your interviewer can eventually predict your uh, future performance on the job. So this being said, uh, the first step in your theoretical preparation here should be to um, actually refresh your memory. You should um, prepare stories th that are the main highlights of your career both successes and also failures. And uh, think about this in, 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 a, in a deeper detail. So, for example, this, this step uh, is, um, varies a lot on the amount of questions that you... the amount of stories you should prepare varies a lot by the type of role that you're applying for and by the company that you're applying for. So, for example, um, for a company such as Amazon that puts a lot of emphasis in behavioral interviewing and you, if you expect to be grilled, with behavioral questions, you should have around 20 independent stories of major projects you've worked on. Uh, and uh, the way you'd probably... I mean, how do you arrive to those 20 stories? Well, uh, again, I'm going to give an example here, um, that of Amazon, which have their 14 leadership principles. So you would come up with two, with two stories for each of the 14 leadership principles, with both positive and negative stories here you would want to have at least between three and five negative stories in this in this scenario. So, uh, uh, 14 times 2, that will be 28, and because there's some overlap, you would expect to have around 20 stories. So, this is, uh, this is how you would go for, for a scenario in which you would expect to be grilled with behavioral questions. Now, what if you do not expect to be grilled with behavioral questions? Well, uh, th th then you might have... Um, um, a slightly simpler approach, that is, uh, you must think of uh, around five such stories. Make sure that at least one of them is a proper failure. I would recommend two of them, actually. Um, and then you can basically move on to the next step. Uh, needless to say that you should prepare these stories in a star format, right? So, uh, unless you have <laughs> you're living under a rock, you, you'd know about the star format. Um, the second step, that you should do this, and by the way, the first step should uh, the time investment for the first step should vary by by the by your expectations. So, in other words, if you if you have to prepare twenty stories, you should spend one day at least, if not two days, on brainstorming and eventually writing down all all, all those stories. Uh, the reason why you should write them down is because they will be useful later on. Now, next, moving on, um, the next uh, step in this process in the preparation, the theory of the behavioral interviewing is to prepare questions, uh, to prepare answers for uh, a set of most commonly asked questions that get asked uh, in job interviews, as well as uh, some introductory types of questions such as tell me about yourself or why do you want to work here. And uh, with the main highlight to also focus on the failure stories. It's imperative that you focus on the failure story because those are some of the hardest to prepare, right? So. This is what you must do. Now, there are some variations here. Like, for, for example, I have a ton of lists with the most commonly asked questions, also by company, but also independent of companies. And um, these lists should be enough for, uh, 
for a normal for a normal behavior interview. So it should be plenty for for a uh, if you expect your uh, your interview to be slightly behavioral, it should be good enough if you expect your interview to be um, to have a fair amount of behavioral questions. And uh, however, if you if you do expect to, be, to get grilled with behavioral questions, there are some further approaches such as. Um, for, for example, in the case of I'm going to have to give again Amazon as an example, their four leadership principles are more likely than not to have questions that get asked for each of those principles. So, um, though you should basically focus your questions and your answers to those questions to those four leadership principles and your stories. So this would be an extra step that you want to do. How do you find questions to the leadership principles? Uh, well, they're leaked online. I also have uh, examples that you can tailor actually to those leadership principles here on, here on my channel as well. So this is how you would, uh, you would do it. But just maybe one, one quick note of advice here. Uh, I've seen you know, that there's a whole industry of, uh, of buying most commonly asked behavioral questions for various purposes. And um, I've noticed that uh, many people tend to get uh, very excited when they find such a list. And including on my channel, some of the most, some of the videos with the most views are with the top five most asked questions in whatever interview. Uh, however, my experience has shown that uh, this is more a motivational thing than an effective approach to prepare. So if you have a list with uh, whatever, all possible questions for an interview. That won't get you uh, far. Because this is only the theory and it's not even, you haven't even started to prepare answers to those questions. So that's why it's, it's not as, as, as strong as you might think. So it's a motivational thing beyond all. So keep this in mind. Um, now, how do you prepare answers uh, to these questions? You prepare answers in writing. Uh, you could use cards. Uh, if you want. Uh, how do you know if they are great answers? Well, the best answers I've, I've noticed are around one and a half minutes. Uh, the most important thing in, a, in an answer is that you communicate the idea that you want to transmit. You properly communicate the situation, right? So if that takes you three minutes, so be it. But this is the most important thing. The best answers I've seen that people manage to compress that all the way to one and a half minutes or so give or take. They should be in a star format, needless to say, because uh, the star format has become the de facto norm in behavioral interviewing. So no matter how many, how, how much uh, other people tend to introduce other notions such as the par or whatever else, the star format is works just fine in any situation or 98% of situations if you want. So, and the one thing you would also want to keep in mind that your answers are quantifiable in some measure, some way. So, uh, quantifiable uh, both in terms of results, if that makes sense, but also when you talk about the situation, talk about what project was, when it was, uh, recent situations are much more efficient than, uh, than uh, older ones. And uh, yeah, these would be some of the main highlights here. Now, what are some, some, what are some indications of, of bad answers? Uh, the, bad, the worst answers are when you cannot communicate your, your story properly. So it's, it's as simple as this and it probably becomes more obvious in the next step when you actually practice them. But uh, you, should manage, you should ensure that the story makes sense, has a beginning, a middle and an ending. It properly makes sense within the con also within the context of, of the question that's getting asked. And also your story, needless to say, shouldn't be too long in writing because you'll end up spending too much time with these things. You should uh, only develop as much as you could fit in one half to maybe three minutes long. So be careful about these things. Uh, another indication of a, of a bad answer would be instead of talking about specific, of a specific situation, talk about the hypothetical one. Like, uh, for example, uh, tell me about the time when you receive negative feedback from your manager. And you would answer with, whenever I would receive feedback from a negative feedback from a manager, I would do this, this, this and that. When in fact the the, the 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 bread and butter of this answer should be, let me tell you about the time when I had a, a disagreement with my manager. And uh, furthermore, it's it, it, it you should understand also why they are asking you such questions. 
in, in my example, where you get negative feedback from your manager, it's they would ask you this because they want to uh, to see your ability to to listen and your ability to earn to re-earn their trust. In this case, so. Uh, try to understand why are they asking you this question in the first place and uh, your answers will get so much better uh, for the technical part and also for the, for the, for the next part. Uh, do not memorize answers. Do not memorize answers. It's a bad strategy. That's all I had to say on, on this topic. And um, next, uh, the other 50% of the behavioral interview is to, I call it role play. So uh, role-playing or uh, practicing these, uh, these questions and answers is quite essential. And uh, I, cannot, uh, I cannot stress enough that how important this step is because I simply see people every day that spend the bulk, of, but the bulk of their time preparing the best possible written answers. And when it comes to uh, speaking them, uh, it's a completely different story. Like, it's, it's not the same person. <laughs> So it's it's hugely important that you that you understand that it's very very it's essential that you role play these things. Now, if you've never done behavioral interviewing before, I would very much just suggest you to role play with someone that has an understanding of behavioral interviewing that has done this before. Why you would want to do this? Because if you do this with someone that has no idea about behavioral interviewing, they won't know what to ask you. They will have no idea what follow-up questions to ask you. They will have no idea what's a good, what's a bad answer. So they, they will just say, fine, okay, let's move on. Right? So you will only train yourself to have an answer for any question, not to have a good answer or a great answer, which you would be looking forward to have here. Now, if you have an idea about behavioral interviewing, it makes sense to, I mean, it still makes sense to role play with someone, even if they don't necessarily have a good idea about this. Um, just keep in mind that you might also have some some biases here. So uh, try to take your time to properly assess your answers and try to train the other person on how to go about uh, your answers, what to look what, what to look for there. And uh, I've, I've noticed I've, I mentioned previously some of the indicators of of great answers here. Um, you could randomize questions, or the other person could randomize question and um, Keep in mind here that it's not uncommon, at least in, for Amazon interviews, for uh, people to be role-playing these questions for two weeks. Two weeks for an on-site interview. And uh, including for junior roles. Like, I'm not talking about necessarily about senior roles here. So, um, another thing you should be careful of with these role-playing sessions is, uh, given the volume of questions, how often, how often do you repeat the same story over and over again for multiple questions? If you repeat it quite often, then that's a question mark that you might not have enough stories. So remember when I said that uh, if you expect to, be, to get grilled with behavioral questions, you should prepare 20 stories. If you expect to apply for a company that doesn't put a lot of emphasis, there are five stories is enough. Now, um, last but not least, uh, here are some final thoughts, some final notes that you should keep in mind during the actual interview. Uh, first of all, you should know how long is the interview. Why you want to know how long is the interview? Because you want to keep the level of energy. You don't want to give your best in the first two hours, and the next three hours will be, you will be underperforming because you're tired. So these interviews can be really exhausting. This is the reality. So, by the way, this is also very much linked with uh, with the role play that is supposed to train you to build some um, some that toughness, you know, to 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 get through it. Uh, also, I recommend people to be cautiously optimistic during these interviews. Cautiously optimistic. Um, there, you want to have enough training so you feel confident that you get answers to most uh, behavioral questions. I also have uh, a list with all possible behavioral questions according to my statistics. So, uh, in other words, you should uh, be aware that you should not block it with these questions because these questions are designed in such a way that anyone should have an answer for them. So do not block. Like there are many ways, there are many ways to win time if you don't want, if you don't have an answer, such as to repeat the question, to ask a follow-up question, or to start with a hypothetical situation. Like 
in the case in, in previous example that I get time that time when you had a disagreement with, with your boss, you could start like whenever I had a disagreement with my with someone, I do this, 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 and that. And now let me think, let me tell you about a specific time, right? Because then you remember a specific situation, then you go with your star answer. So uh, for the behavioral part of an interview, uh, I wouldn't recommend staying quiet for long periods of time because it's a behavioral thing. For the technical part, for a subject matter expertise, uh, yes, you could do whatever it takes to solve that technicality, but for the behavioral part, uh, it's about, uh, you know, putting together a great show. So, uh, there you go. I hope, uh, I hope you found at least some of, uh, some of my advice useful for your preparation. And uh, if you want to support this channel, please feel free to share your interview outcomes in the, in the comment sections of the videos. And uh, thank you very much for watching.